Just getting back from Kelki 2898, a new sci-fi Indian sweeping, expansive, cinematic universe film. They don't say part one anywhere on this, as far as I could tell from the advertising, but it absolutely is. And I'm going to talk about it in spoiler-free fashion. Over the last couple years, I've slowly been dipping my toe into the Indian films, the Tollywoods, the Bollywoods, all, all the woods all around. And for the most part, they hit me. I like what I see. Sometimes a little bit of a miss, not quite fully though. In this instance, another three hour massive movie with clearly a big budget, some big names in the industry. I thought it was pretty damn good. Before I really jump into it, I would appreciate if you could hit the subscribe button though, it's free of charge, costs you nothing, and then you can see more of my reviews. All right, as I was saying, this is a freaking huge movie and it's not winding down at the end of this one. This is easily gonna go two or three more flicks, probably with some spin-offs according to the cinematic universal thing they threw at the end of this. It's three hours long, there is a spot for an intermission, there was none for me, it just said intermission and then it started right back up. This is obviously not an English speaking film, so you're gonna have to do some reading if you're American, it might be tough for some of you but I prefer no dubbing. I like just having the captions below. It, it makes it seem more natural, at least. The quickest way I could summarize this movie is it's Rebel Moon, but good. <laughs> like, Zack Snyder almost seems like he's trying to do an Indian type of film now in 2024 with this crappy Rebel Moon series and failing miserably. And I think the reason is these films feel like completed works with really cool storylines, awesome spectacle, the music, every time the music just knocks it out of the park. And that's one thing these films blow American films out of the water in is the score. The music in these movies is so extreme, so over the top. A guy will be tying his shoe and the music will be like, hey! da, da, da. and I love it. <laughs> it works every time. Can it be too much? Oh yeah, absolutely. And they know it is. And people eat it up. These movies really roll out the red carpet for their lead characters. American films will do that too. They'll have the classic foot stepping out of the door. The camera pans up to our lead character. And you might get a guitar strum depending on what year the movie came out. But in these Indian films, it, it's like a five minute celebration of the main actor coming out. He gets in cool poses. They do all these sweeping camera pans. The bad guys always step back like four feet. It really plays to the audience. And that's not gonna work for a lot of American audience people. And that's why I wouldn't say rush out and watch this. You have to go into a movie like this with that knowledge in mind. There's music. It has that Disney-esque vibe at times where some of the characters are very playful and silly. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it gets a bit much for me in the first act. I thought the lead character played by Prabhas, who I recently saw in Solar Part 1, another Part 1 movie that I really enjoyed. I think I like that one more than this even. He's once again really fantastic in this movie. He's playing kind of a Harrison Ford Han Solo character, a Star Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy kind of out for himself, doesn't give a crap about people. He's only looking for the best paying job out there, no matter what side of the track it comes on. And of course, there's gonna be growth with that character. But the thing that got a bit carried away for me in the first act was just how silly he is with everything, how carefree it gets. It just plays it up to a hammy degree. And again, it's intentional, but it didn't always work for me. Deepako Patakone is also in this. She's always stunning to look at. Her role in this film is the most compelling stuff for me. I was fascinated by her character known as Sum 80 because this movie is set in a post-apocalyptic Mad Max fused with Star Wars setting. It's a really cool look and women are treated like cattle in this world. They have very little rights. They're locked away in some birthing palace so that they can be test subjects for this supreme leader up top who has very sinister plans. Every time we jumped to this section, I was 100% engaged. I was worried, I was interested, fascinated by this bizarre technology in this very weird world that's been crafted. And by the time we get into the second and third acts of this film, the movie is cruising on all cylinders. So many of the things built up really start to fire. Because this movie's not just Mad Max and Star Wars. It's got its own flavor added to it with gods. 
And that's where things start to get absolutely insane in the coolest ways possible. We have a prophecy. We have reincarnated gods. We have so much lore baked into this. It's absolutely no wonder there's planned sequels coming out like a Dune type of situation. I look at movies like this the same way I watch something like Speed Racer, a film that was critically panned. A lot of people did not like it or get it. Same with Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. That one's not critically panned, but there's plenty of people that hate it. Those kind of quirky movies speak to me. I like that they have a unique, distinct look and style to them. It's not just cookie cutter shit. Speed Racer specifically, because it was anime inspired, it really tried to mirror that kind of look and feel with giving its own influence and treatment. It hits kind of all age groups. It's colorful, it's vibrant, it's completely different from anything else. And that's what we have here. The spectacle is larger than life. I don't even know a term to use to describe the action in this movie. Preposterous seems like antiquated. It's so insanely cool and over the top and silly and fun and different. I mean, guys are getting picked up six at a time, flipped upside down and thrusted across the room. There's a giant statue used as an elevator. It's, there's so much pageantry in this, I eat it up. Those that have been following me for a while though, I know I'm a bitch when it comes to runtime. I don't like to sit for too long. So three hours, that's a heavy burden for me. That's a chore for me at times. I don't want to feel like I'm in, I'm a prisoner for movies. I want to actually enjoy them and not be worried that I still have so much time left to go. With this, I was I was invested. There are some parts where I thought, yeah, we could have trimmed this down a little. We could have tightened this up to like a two hour, 20 minute film, but there is a lot in here. It's a very dense movie, but absolutely not one that's going to work for everyone. So you have to go into this again with a mindset that, all right, I'm watching something very out there, very wild, and I got to either be on for this ride or I just get off right away because it's not going to work. As for me, though, I'm in. I'm all in on this cinematic universe. I'm excited for part two and three and however many things they do. It's really refreshing watching movies that are just having fun. They know their audience, they know what they want to see, and they deliver it. The effects are solid. There's a ton of them. Yes, they look fake at times. Yes, it looks like you're watching video game cutscenes, but badass video game cutscenes, okay? I still like The Matrix Reloaded, that burly brawl that looked fake as hell when it came out in theaters. I love that crap. As long as there's cool characters, great settings, and an interesting storyline, I'm invested. And man, there's a very fascinating storyline here. I don't want to give it away. If this sounds interesting to you, give it a shot. Let me know. Leave a comment. Please like the video. Subscribe again if you haven't. I post movie reviews, commentary, roasts, rants, live streams every single week. And I've talked about half a dozen of these Indian films. And for the most part, I'm pretty positive on them because I do like that they're different. I do like that they kind of pander to the audience. Because you're paying good money for this stuff. Let's get entertained. All right, hopefully I see you next time. Take care.